For reasons unbeknownst to us, there's another X-Men movie coming out. There's two, actually. There's one about uh, s- sad kids in a school, trapped in a ghost school or something. Yeah, trapped in a ghost school, yeah. And there's uh-huh. also Dark Phoenix, mm-hmm. which is a remake of X-Men 3, yep. which is a retelling of the Dark Phoenix storyline from yep. the comic books. Uh-huh. And we're all very excited to see... A different movie. Yeah. <laughs> Any other movie. I just saw the movie Searching. It was very good. You should see that. Okay. Mm-hmm. But yes. this is a video about X-Men. Oh, fine. And I haven't seen Searching, yep. so I can't talk about it at length. Mm-hmm. So, hey, looking at this trailer, there's already more things to pile onto the... Man, this X-Men timeline continuity is fucked, isn't it? It really is. There's a whole lot of them. Why don't we talk about a whole lot of things about this universe that don't make sense? I don't think it matters anymore. No, I agree. It's going to be rebooted. Mm -hmm. It's never seemed to matter to anybody who's made these films along the way. Or really to anyone who's watched them. (laughs) That's right. I mean, it bugs a certain sector of nerds, specifically us. Yeah. But at the same time, we've been battered over the head with them so many times. Now they think we're like... I guess it's fine. I guess it is fine. I don't even worry anymore. And I think a good one to start with, because it's really highlighted big time in this uh, Dark Phoenix trailer, is that Professor X, played by James McAvoy, and Michael Fassbender, played by Magneto. I switched it up there, Mason. What a twist. Thanks. Because what actors really, they channel the characters so much that you're like... Maybe. You'd be hard pressed to notice where one exactly, ends yeah. and one's in a wheelchair or whatever's yeah, happening. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So they're supposed to be approaching the age of Patrick Stewart and Ian McCallum in the first X-Men movie. Yes, that's right. That movie came out in 2000. Yep, but it's set maybe four or five years afterwards. Yeah, and this movie is set in 1992. So in 12 years, yeah. they've gained about 40 years. Each. Yes. Well, it has been 30 years. There's 30 years between first class and this new one. Right. Nobody has aged, aged at all. That's at true. All. Yeah, that's None true. Of- Okay, so so the really, students. so the problem here isn't the continuity bump in the next twelve years; it's the previous thirty years. Yeah, yeah, right. That's uh-huh. it. Why are they Professor in such X a... lost his hair? He did. That's but, a real burn. But why are they in such a hurry to catch up to the first X Men? They could have just all been set in the sixties and seventies. Yeah, right. Why are they jumping decades like, every time? Like, yeah, they could have been set in the sixties and the seventies, like the two decades of X Men comics that were set. The 60s and 70s. Makes sense when you think about it. Mm-hmm, yeah. The thing is, they kind of fixed a lot of these timeline errors with Days of Future Past. Yes. Where they basically said, every X-Men film prior to this no longer counts. Yep. But then they immediately broke the timeline. Yes. Like, straight away. Uh-huh. There's also other characters in these films that have changed age and actors, depending on the era they were born. Uh-huh. So we're talking about Emma Frost. Mm-hmm. Who is a... She's a teenager in the 80s. Yep. During the movie X-Men Origins Wolverine. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of movies later, she's a full-grown adult in the 60s. By the same name. Yes. With the same powers, presumably. Same powers, yeah. Mm-hmm. Crystal Diamond Powers. Yes, correct. And Mind Powers. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe it's her daughter who has the exact same, same name powers, as her. Yeah, uh-huh. Maybe it's one of those... You know how in X-Men 3, there's a whole bunch of mutants, they all have just generic... Yes. It's like, oh, this guy can shoot darts and so can that guy. Wouldn't it be sad to be one of those guys? <laughs> yeah, it would be. Yeah, just, oh, uh, what did you get? Oh, uh, darts. That guy's darts too. Oh, uh, maybe join a darts club, you idiots. <laughs> also, we've got Angel who turns up in X-Men 3. But also in X-Men Apocalypse. As the 80s. Maybe it's his son with the same name and powers. Sounds, yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, that one's, yeah, inexplicable, that one. Jubilee is also in the original X-Men films. But she's also Oh, in... she's a student, but she's not... Yeah, but she she's not named, yeah. No, she's a, she appears briefly in X-Men 2. Yeah. Like, when, there's a, when, the, when the bad guys invade the mansion, she's there, right, I yes, think. And I think maybe she has the colour scheme, but knowing those yeah. films, probably not. No. Uh, I think maybe even she's just sitting in the background of some student scenes from some of yeah, those right. movies. But then Jubilee, of course, turns up in X-Men... Uh, the one with Oscar Isaac, Oscar Isaac in Blue Makeup. Apocalypse, Apocalypse. yes. Apocalypse, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Why was that easier to say than just Apocalypse or Remember? <laughs> Here's another example though, Mason. I'm ready. Uh, in Wolverine Origins, and this is in the original timeline, not the new timeline, not that that matters. Because mm-hmm, they erased <laughs> the old timeline and replaced it with a new timeline and then ruined that timeline. Correct. Professor X turns up at the end and he's been de-aged and it's the 80s. He doesn't look like James McAvoy. Sure, I'll let that slide, uh-huh. I guess. But also, he turns up in first class as James McAvoy. And at the end of that film, he's shot in the spine and he's in a wheelchair. But then, in Wolverine Origins, he isn't. But also, at the same time, Hank Pym has a serum that means he can walk with his legs again. Yeah. But also, he's using his mind powers. And if he had that serum, then he wouldn't be able to use his mind powers. Do you see what I'm saying? Sort of, but not 
really? I'm so confused. He shouldn't There's, be walking. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, exactly. I mean, maybe he's doing a projection of. It's never I'm really walking. explained, is it? Yeah. No. Yeah. Why does he look like that with that weird de aging effect? Yeah. Why is anything anything in these films? There's also that if you remember at the end of the the movie The Wolverine. Yeah. The Wolverine of the title, mm. Hugh Jackman, The Wolverine. I remember. He shows up back in America, and then at, he's met at the gate by Professor X and Magneto, yes. who have teamed up, and they and he's and they're like, Wolverine, you got to help us. Things are not good right currently. <laughs> And then it's X Men: Days of Future Past. And then it's forty years what later. What happened in between? <laughs> we never find out. Or was that it? Did the automatic doors of the airport open up, and just the whole world's being destroyed by by Sentinels? Is that what happened? I guess Boy, so. And Wolverine's like, man, I really, I, I that was a real weird plane trip. <laughs> was... I never even thought of that. You'd be absolutely right. Mm. And there's also another continuity error in that. In terms of Professor X is obliterated during the movie X Men Three. Three, he is, yeah. But at the end, of course, in the post credit, he transfers his mind into his brother, who's comatose. Is that his brother? His or twin just a brother, Rambo? apparently. Mm. Apparently, let's say it is. All right. But even if it is his brother, was his brother also shot in the spine? I've mulled this over <laughs> in my off hours many a time. First of all, I don't think it's his brother. I think that's been said after the fact. If I recall, it's just some rando, and it doesn't look anything like. Him. Okay. But and you're right. At the end of The Wolverine, he's just Professor X again. Yeah. Now, look, I'm willing to concede that maybe the guy in the coma doesn't have the use of his legs anymore because okay. he's been in a coma. Okay. I can also concede that maybe Professor X is using his mind powers so he looks like Professor X. He's just that rando, but he's using his mind powers to look like Professor X again. What else can you concede? Well, we're conceding Almost things. anything at this point, <laughs> I guess. But also, it'd be nice if that were explained at some point. That's the thing about these movies is is that because it's a comic book universe and everybody's got crazy powers, you could, I guess you could get anything to yeah. happen. But it'd be nice if you explained it, because then it wouldn't leave so many plot holes. Maybe there's a guy out there who can, like, mutant plastic surgery your face. I'm sure there is. And he just waved his hands and he looked like Professor What's his name, though? That's I'd like to know. (laughs) What's his name? Show me his business card. You know what I mean? But I feel also kind of like, because they don't care about this stuff, why should we care? Exactly, right? Yeah. Yeah. They don't pay attention to the details, so why should anybody else? The other part is, he says in the early X-Men films that Patrick Stewart says that him and Magneto met when they were teenagers. Yep. They both met when they were 35. <laughs> yeah, and right. then they stayed 35 for 40 years. Yep. And then they were 75. That's right, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. That, I mean, it's easy to explain. It's it's like, you know, you know, if somebody's like, how'd you meet? And you don't want to say online dating. So you're like, at a party, right? It's just <laughs> easier. You know, oh, we met when we were kids. It's better than saying... Yeah, we met when we were both 35 and then we were 35 for 40 years and then we were in our 70s. You know? Then there's more questions. But if you say you were met when you were kids, people go, yeah, that Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what about this? There is an X-Men mutant cure that is a big part of X-Men 3. Correct, yes. Mystique accidentally gets it and turns back into Rebecca Romaine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rogue wants it so she can stop sucking the life out of people by accident. Yep. And kiss a boy. And kiss a boy, mm-hmm. of course. Yep. Yes. And Hank... How did you two meet? Ah, uh, like I kissed a boy and <laughs> he went into a coma. I mean, online dating? I don't know. <laughs> but Hank McCoy gets close to the source of this cure, which is a boy yep. uh, who nullifies mutant powers. Yes. And he looks at his hand and it's a human hand and he's like, by golly, I'm loving this. Mm. I haven't seen myself in human form. Oh, my stars and garters, he as, would have said. As, he, as Kelsey Grammer would say. Mm-hmm. But then also, in the prequel X-Men films, he's always just Nicholas Holt. Yeah, that's true, yeah. He barely puts on the beast makeup yep. because he has a serum that means he doesn't need, he, he doesn't have to walk around like that. Yep. I don't it's know. It's called the day off for the costume department <laughs> serum. <laughs> So I feel like I don't imagine that would be a big deal for him or anybody that there is a mutant cure because there already is one. Yeah. Mm. But I guess maybe it's not public knowledge. I'll concede that things as we're conceding We're conceding. Things. I'll concede that maybe it's worn off okay, over the years. Fine. Maybe okay. it's, you know, he's addicted to it. He's addicted to giving the costume and hair department the day off. <laughs> and he just keeps taking it every day and then it wears off eventually. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Here is something that I will not concede oh, though. Oh, I thought this video was all about people conceding things. This is a good one to end on. Yes. In X-Men, the one where Oscar Isaac is blue. Yep. Apocalypse. Mm-hmm. At the start of the film, 
He's said that he's capable of doing literally anything. And he demonstrates this by taking a fistful of sand and beheading a row of soldiers. Yes. Then later in the movie, when everyone's shooting their lasers at him, he doesn't do that. Yep. He can do anything, or at the very least, he can cut people's heads off with a fistful of sand and he just lets people shoot lasers at him Mm -hmm. until he's a skeleton and he explodes. That is horseshit. Correct, yes. That's a continuity error in the same movie. I don't even have to jump around to other decades or timelines. That's just a thing that happens in that stupid movie. Oh, no, there's a a branching timeline in that movie. Okay. (laughs) At the end of Act 1, we go to a different timeline where he he no longer has the ability to behead people with grains of sand. Anyway... I'm really excited for Dark Phoenix, aren't we all? I'm not. Oh yeah. I mean, especially based on all the things we've just said. <laughs> the video we've just the video we've just made makes me less likely to enjoy X Men Dark Phoenix. I'll, I'll I'll level with you. But if anyone can fix any of these timeline errors or even ones that aren't in this video, that would be great. Leave it below. Or if you have another timeline error, yeah, chuck it in there. Or if you know how to behead people with grains of sand, let us know. What's the secret? What is it? We'd love to know the secret. There's actually videos here, though, every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. None of them are about us beheading people with grains of sand. If you wouldn't mind letting us know, (laughs) if you want to spice this channel up a little. We get on that. Mm -hmm. We also have a podcast called The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. We recently did an episode of Superhero Showdown, where we pitted a number of fictional comic book characters or movie characters against each other to see who would win. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a fun time. I'll link it below. Terrific. And like videos. All videos. It can be this one, it can be others. Just like videos? Just be generous. Just be generous with your likes. If you like something, give it a chuck it a like. Let yeah. them know. Let them know you appreciate it. Let them know your totes preach it. Your totes preach. Mm-hmm. See it. Yes. Bye, everybody. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.